Hello guys, welcome back to yet another video from the Puerto Rico Scabby channel. My name is Emanuel Santiago and today I will be reviewing and using on, out here on my backyard the 100 to 400 f5.6 to f8 RF lens. Now, as you may all know, this is not an L version uh, lens. It is quite cheap. I got it with $150 um, dollars on discount, which is incredible. If you want a similar lens, but L, L uh, version of the lens, you would have to pick up the 100 to 500 uh, from Canon and that lens is almost four times three to four times the price So I will be testing this lens seeing how it performs against uh, a more expensive L glass like the 70 to 200 f 2.8 of course it won't have that um, background compression it won't have that uh, sweet bokeh but uh, when you're out on the field and you see things you want to get them up close so I have here my R5 I have the 100 to 400 and let's see what we can get with this lens. Okay guys, so I'm currently here in my backyard and um, I'm trying to keep a little bit quiet because I have found one of the rarest, most legendary birds here in the island of Puerto Rico. It is very uncommon that you see one of these birds. Right now, I saw through the lens that we have one right under that tree right there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the distance because right now I'm using my 15 to 35 lens here in, in my backyard. But yes, I will try and shoot that bird, shoot some b-roll and shoot some pictures as well so you guys, um, so you guys can actually see and have this experience of seeing such a legendary and rare beard here in the island of Puerto Rico. Okay guys, so I think that we have gotten real, really, really good footage from this bird. I am really excited to see these pictures on my computer because on the camera, this picture looks awesome. Now, um, some things that I uh, want to say about the 100 to 400 is I am really surprised by the amazing speed of the autofocus of this lens. Also the weight, it is super light, super light. I have been shooting all of this evening, no fatigue at all. And um, yeah, it, it's, it's all good surprises until now. So let's see if we can find good surprises on the computer as well. I will be seeing you in the studio. Okay guys, so it was an awesome experience having this lens out on the field. I even took it uh, for a paid job where I had to shoot some product photography. And as you can see the images, they look very, very sharp coming out of this lens using a flash. I used uh, AD200 Pro. So yes, it was a high quality flash with soft boxes and everything, but images still looking very, very sharp at F8. Because yes, one peculiarity that this hand lens has is that it's sharper aperture, it's F8. Even though that you have a F5.6 to F8 limit on this lens, um, I find that throughout the sun range, throughout F5.6, up to f11 this lens is very consistently sharp in that regard now product photography is one thing but wildlife photography and landscape photography is another as you may have seen from the video clips that i've shown you yes a lot of amazing footage looking uh very very sharp very nicely colored the contrast of this lens is amazing but to my surprise when photographing birds 
This thing has also very, very fast autofocus. And the reason for that is that Canon has also put the Nano USM uh, autofocus system that some of the higher ups uh, RF L lenses have. Now, when talking about telephotos on the RF lineup, yes, the 70 to 200 as well as the 100 to 500, they both have dual Nano USM motors and that makes them very, very quick. That's one of the differences between this this lens and a, on a L series lens like the 70 to 200 has uh, in that regard but out on the field it was very quick very very uh, agile when trying to um, focus on those fast moving birds that I was seeing on my backyard. Another thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the uh, construction of the lens. The construction of the lens, yes, it feels cheap because it is a very lightweight lens, but that makes, the, makes this lens perfect for travel, perfect for that traveler that wants uh, a little bit more reach or a lot more reach because this lens paired up with a camera like the EOS R5, which has 45 megapixels you can crop in those images very very much and you will still retain high quality products like for example on video if you put it if you put that camera on 8k you then can crop up to 400 percent and not lose any quality at all when shooting with this lens i use this technique a lot when shooting uh or when composing the video that you just saw and yeah the results to my surprise are very very appealing and for the price you cannot beat um, what Canon is offering you at the moment of this review. Now guys, from my real world experience, would I recommend that you get this lens? The answer is a resounding yes, yes. I, uh, this lens comes highly recommended because yes, the optics are really nice. Uh, autofocus is very snappy, very fast. That US, that nano USM motor that this uh, lens has very, very effective when it comes to wildlife photography as well as product shots. Um, the accuracy of the focus as well is very nice. And with autofocusing, like on R5, R6, R7, R10, you won't have any problems in that department. Uh, things to improve on this lens, actually for video, if you have the image stabilization at all the way up at 400, um, sometimes when panning, yeah, it can uh, produce a little bit of, uh, of jittering, but that's only when you start the motion, when you are panning and you continue the motion, you will notice that it, it is like butter, like magic. The lens will stabilize your footage. Um, for uh, the def In the defense of this lens, all of the footage that you just saw from that B-roll was handheld footage. Nothing with tripods, no fluid heads, no anything. I was just hand holding my R5, image stabilization turned on on this lens and steadily handling it at 400 millimeters had no issues at all. It is an awesome lens in that department. Now, to the people that say, oh, it is not an L, -L uh, series lens, it must not be good, ah, oh, cheap, another cheap lens, forget about it, no. You have to try things that are coming out for the RF mount because this lens, for, exa for example, it took me by surprise completely. It is now one of my favorite lenses and that can provide you with opportunities of shooting so many different types of shots that other people would have to crop in and they will start losing resolution like crazy. Okay guys, if you have found something of value during this video, please consider subscribing. That will help my channel a lot. We are almost, almost at 750 subscribers. I am very excited to see that we beat the 750 mark. And at uh, the moment of this review, I'm still considering of making a versus between this lens, the 100 to 400 non-L version to the 70 to 200 L f2.8 because yes we have many beaches there are many surfers around, down around there and i want to see um the the out of focusing capabilities of both lenses uh, under very harsh conditions there at the beach with surfers and everything and yes it will be a definitely an amazing battle so guys see you around consider subscribing and stay safe <laughs>